pretty good size one this, I mean they get bigger than that but this one would be about I'd say a little bit over a meter so three maybe even three and a half foot nose to tail tip also just listen, it's always nice at the water holes but I can hear some grey luries. Here's the other one. You can't see this one very well. Let me just make sure it is. Uh, this is a smaller one. Perfect place for the monitor lizards. The water monitor are very, very good swimmers. And uh, the rock monitor, the other species we get here, they, you find normally more in rocky outcrops or hiding in trees, sort of the general bush felt. Let's see, maybe we can get a little bit closer, I expect. We might go into the water then. Let's have a look. Beautiful specimen. It's really good condition, healthy. As I said, full belly. I think that's maybe a Closer. He's just lifted his head up a little bit, so he's aware of us getting closer now, so... Great. So it's quite dark, in fact. I'm wondering if it might not be shedding its skin somewhere in the next while. Sometimes you get the markings more prominent. If you look at the face, you've got the sort of yellow and light green brown blotches. Very, very good for camouflage in the sort of vegetation that you get around and on the edges of, of water holes and rivers obviously in the big river systems you get monsters of these guys really big ones a friend of mine once uh, caught one of these uh, it was a Madikwe game reserve and he caught it in the water which is incredibly difficult but he did it in, a, in, in quite a funny way he essentially just let the thing bite and latch onto his hand and they they can really sort of latch on and he pulled it out you know without holding on to it purely by the monitor holding on to him but uh, the point of the story is that uh, they measured it not exactly they didn't have a measuring tape but um, Steve's about 183 is so he's six foot and it was very close to the same length as his height so these guys can get up to five six feet even close to six feet this guy as I said earlier probably about three and a half foot Although it's deceptive sometimes looking at things and estimating their size, like an elephant. An elephant far away looks big, but not that big. When the elephant comes and stands, he put his trunk on the bonnet, or is the hood, as many of you might call it, the front of the car, then suddenly you realize how big an elephant really is. One of the most beautiful African sounds you can hear, I'm sure. You could hear that just now. That was an African fish eagle. We saw him here the other day at this dam actually flying around. Just calling there in the distance. <whistles> right, well, the monitor's going to enjoy the sun. I'm not going to go closer. He's, uh, oops, sorry. He's enjoying the, the morning sun baking session. Look, I saw something in the bush there, which I think is a log, but... to look I'm not sure what it is all right well I think it's just nothing but I'm just gonna go past there anyway can't quite make out what it is that I saw there um, morning Lulu you are wondering what do monitor lizards eat they eat sort of you know you could almost say anything <laughs> they um, they they hunt to some extent they scavenge to some extent um, they'll eat little dead things you know small birds or insects or things that might have drowned in the water uh, things they can catch in the water 
Uh, bird eggs, for instance, is one of the things they, they eat quite often. So birds that nest around. I mean, this dam is sort of a limited, you know, concentrated space where these two guys live in. But, uh, you know, also on big river systems and things, we've got lots of big reed beds. You know, they would find uh, crocodile eggs even. Um, other monitor lizards' eggs probably as well. Um, let's find my way here. Uh, and catch those things. I mean, it's not like they're going to hunt a bird, but, you know, if the opportunity comes along, they'll catch it. If they come across a nest that doesn't have eggs in anymore but has the young chicks, they would eat those. Uh, so pretty much anything. They're very, I mean, they, they're small dragons, really. So um, yeah, anything small dragons would have eaten, these guys would eat. Have a look. As I said, I think it was nothing, but it's, there's just something about it that I thought, let's rather make sure it's nothing. One of our favorite characters in the bush. And this is a different species. You get a few different kinds of hornbill. This is a red-billed hornbill. As you may have guessed from the name, their bill is more red in color as opposed to the yellow-billed hornbill, which has got a more blue bill. Just checking if you're awake. The yellow-billed hornbill obviously has a yellow bill. And then you get the Red bull and the grey billed hornbills. That's the three kinds you see around here quite often. All right, we're doing a bit of grooming. Now he's going looking for some food. Let's go a little bit closer. We'll have a quick look at him. I do want to move on a couple of places I want to explore this morning but let's just have a look at these guys they are fantastic to watch something almost comical about them the way they move on the ground Let's look at that <laughs> tail up wings down checking dung pile to dung pile this is buffalo dung elephant dung lots of animals using this water hole at the moment and the dung creates a great place for insects to find food in, find moisture in, lay their eggs in and that's what the, the hornbill is checking for. He's just seeing what he could find, scratching through it. Breakfast time. out this morning. <laughs> I see Brian is all um, fly proof. Fly proof. <laughs> right, so I just I have to show you this. This is morning drive. You know morning drives are always a little bit more. We're all rested, we're having fun. Give me a second. We're gonna answer questions just now but there's another question just now, but Brian, just look at me here. Guys, this is what Brian looks like this morning. Turn it down a little bit. <laughs> Alright, he does look a little bit like he's about to rob me, but that's his way of keeping the flies off because you say, I can do this, but Brian can't, he's got his hands busy making sure we see everything. Alright, we're going to do a little bit of driving, we're going to head towards Aratusa, go explore some of the roads that I would have forgotten there by now. So, look around, see around, hope we're going to take it nice and slow as well, no rush, we are on game drive. Might even swing past Trias Dam quickly, just just to check, just in case. Maybe Kunuma's popped out there again.
left uh, Twin Dams now, it's just off to our right. We came here looking for, well, some monkey calls. Uh, not looking for them, we were listening to the monkey calls, but the monkeys had obviously seen something. And I hadn't seen any tracks along the way there. And I just spotted one, but I'm just going to try and see if I can show you. This is, sometimes you get a track and it's like, you know, it's like the sort of, you know, advertising page in a magazine. It's clear, you can see what it's about. But other times you just get little sort of snippets of it. There's one that's not bad. Let me just see if I can find another one. It looks like a male leopard. I would go as far as even guessing Kunyuma, Ach, not Kunyuma Q perhaps. There's another one. Mm, I'm going to find the one that I can show you shortly. That's maybe not a bad one. Also some elephant tracks, some buffalo tracks, the usual suspects that you'd hope to see around water holes. Um, guys, it's not a great track, but just to show you, it's always nice to you know, proof some the pudding kind of thing. Brian, I think we can get that one. Let me just make sure. Where are we now? Oh, very close. Turn slightly next. There, I think that one. Yes, uh, that, uh, there, that one. <laughs> Quick talk through it, but as I said, this is not a super clear one. So I'm right in the view. And just find there we are. So that's the track. That little section there. It's walking in that direction. So you've got the pad at the back, and the one, two, three, four toes. And the pad or cat tracks, remember they've got those three lobes at the back. So you've got one, two, let me use my pinky, that would be better. One, two, three lobes at the back. One, two, three, four toes. Not the perfect track, but as far as tracking goes, the perfect track. It's fresh, we know where he's going. He came past here heading up the road towards the, um, the west. And now we or other vehicles Great tracking team, Scott and Stefan, by the way, are very, very good. Not just at the effort they put in, but actually at the, the tracking skills. Between the two of them, they could track a... Well, there was a great expression. Luna Moore used to write it. What was it? I forgot exactly. But they could track a bird across a granite mountain or something like that. You know, they can... If it moved there, they can find it. But we will keep this in mind for later on. Gut feeling that it's Q. Young my leopard brother to Kenyuma, the one we saw this morning. But who knows? 